In this video, we're going to discuss the reduced echelon form of a matrix. And we have here, again, three equations with four unknowns. So this is an undetermined system. Notice that it's equal to zero. If you have an undetermined system set equal to zero, then you're guaranteed a solution because when you have the augmented matrix, even if you get a whole row of zeros, it's equal to zero. So there's no inconsistency there. So with this type of situation, you're guaranteed a solution, not a solution, but infinite number of solutions, because since we have more rows than we have columns, there's going to be at least one or more free variables uh, that's going to surface when we go through with the uh, Gaussian elimination technique. But let's start off here then. Here are the equations and here they are represented with the augmented matrix as we have done in the previous videos. Now we said in the previous videos that we always want to make this one. Well, look how this is set up. All you have to do is add this here to make that zero and multiply by two to make that zero. For this time being, we'll just leave it like it is then. So if we add this row to this row to make that zero, we get these numbers. If we multiply this whole row by two and add it to this row so that this comes out zero, then we get this set of numbers. And here we can divide across by four to make that one. So now try to keep things in focus. Here we have zero one zero one zero instead of the fours here. Okay, now what we want to do is we made these zeros. Now we go over to the next element here. We want to make everything beneath that zero. So if we multiply this by minus one and add to this row, this becomes zero. And you get this set of numbers right here. OK, now we can continue along. We'll divide this row here by minus five to make this a one. So this last row here becomes zero, zero, one, minus seven fifths, zero. So notice then, we started here, we made all the numbers beneath this zero, and here we made the numbers beneath this zero, and now we have the matrix here, but notice there's something else that we can do, and this is now we're going to get into the reduced echelon form. I can also make the number above this zero. Multiply this row by negative one and add it to this row and this becomes zero. And that's what we have right here. And then of course this now is going to be negative one plus three so this comes out as two. This says change because this is just zero right here. So now the augmented matrix is in this form. Well, notice now that if I add this row to this row, I can eliminate the one that the negative one that's above this one. We can eliminate this just by adding these together. So we do that, and this of course stays the same. This stays the same. When we add, that's still negative two. That's going to be zero. One plus negative one, now that's zero. And negative seven fifths plus ten fifths leaves us with three fifths here. So now the augmented matrix is in this form. And now finally, we're going to go ahead, we usually do in our first step, make, turn this into one by dividing through by minus two, and this three-fifths becomes minus three-tenths. So here then, 
what we've done is with this number we made the numbers beneath it zeros as we did here but then also we went ahead and we could make the numbers above these with non-zero we can make them zero as well and that's what you call the reduced echelon form. Now let's look at this and also we want to discuss the reduced echelon form because it takes on a special significance with square matrices and we want to discuss that but first let's finish this problem up. So here then we st started with this augmented matrix which is row equivalent to this augmented matrix. Now let's look at this. Here we want to see what are the lead variables. X1 is a lead variable. X2 is a lead variable. X3 is a lead variable. That means that X4 is a free variable. And that means then that this right here is going to have an infinite number of solutions as we expected. It's an underdetermined system. So here, let's just make some room. We don't need this anymore. This is the reduced echelon form here where zeros and also above are zeros as well. Okay, here we have and we have x1, x2, and x3 are the lead variables as we discussed in the previous videos. Those are the lead variables and we have one free variable that's x4, but that's all you need to have an infinite number of solutions. Free variable x4 can take on any va any number we want it to. That's why it's called free. Okay, so here what do we have? We have x1, x2, we have x3 minus seven-fifths times x4 equals zero. Let's make some more room. We don't need this. So here we have x3 equals seven-fifths times x4. And this is what we mean when we said in the previous videos we end up expressing the lead variables in terms of the free variable. All we can say about x3, it's equal to 7 fifths times x4, and x4 can be whatever number we want it to be. So if we choose to be 100, then x3 will equal 700 divided by 5. Okay, let's go to this row. Now we have x2 plus x4 equals 0. So x2 equals minus x4. That's all we can say about it. And then here, from the first row, we have x1 minus 3 tenths times x4 equals 0. So x1 equals 3 tenths times x4. And that right there is a solution to those equations. We can choose for x4 whatever number we want, multiply it by 3 tenths, that's what x1 will be. Take the negative of it, that's what x2 will be. Multiply it by 7 fifths, that's what x3 will be. And since we can choose any number we want for x4, we're always going to have an infinite number of solutions. And this is the reduced echelon form of that augmented matrix. Now, 
That's all we want to say about it, except we want to wrap it up by considering what happens when you have square matrices. This was an undetermined system. We had more equations than we had unknowns that we dealt with in the previous videos. But now, let's say that we have a square matrix n by n matrix. Now, in, the, in our that previous video, I think we entitled it um, square matrix um, lead variables and free variables. What we demonstrated in that previous video, if it's a non-singular matrix, a square non-singular matrix, and what that meant, it had a unique solution, And, as we'll discuss in more detail in future videos, it has an inverse. Well, what we said in the previous video is that when we have, and this is non-singular, what we said in the previous video is that when you have a, an, all non-singular matrices have to be square matrices. And when you have a square non-singular matrix, when you're doing the Gaussian elimination and you're trying to get it into row echelon form, we stated or we demonstrated that the diagonal elements can never come out to be zero. So suppose we just have a three by three matrix and it's non-singular. So Those are the three diagonal elements, and just as we did with the previous um, matrix here, we can put this into reduced row echelon form. So here we have 0, 0, 0, and above we have 0, 0, 0, like this. That would be the reduced echelon form for a 3 by 3 non-singular matrix where these diagonal elements cannot be zero. What's beneath them can be zero and what's above them can be zero just as we demonstrated um, in, the, in the previous matrix that we just saw. Well this is row equivalent. Divide this by C1. Divide this by C2. Divide this by C3, and this is the identity matrix, the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So what it means is that if you have a non-singular matrix, by definition a non-singular matrix has to be a, a square matrix, n by n, and you go ahead, use the Gaussian elimination to get it in row echelon form, these diagonal elements can never be zero, and indeed, as we just demonstrated the previous uh, matrix, you can get it in a reduced echelon form, which will look like this. All you're going to have are these diagonal elements, and whatever values these are, we can divide this row by that particular number to make these into ones for each row and get the identity matrix. So what we're saying is that a non-singular matrix is row equivalent to the identity matrix. And that's a fact that we're going to use in the next couple of videos um, that are coming up. And we're going to use that information to show how we can construct the inverse of a non-singular matrix. If A is non-singular, not only does it have a unique solution, as we discussed in our previous video, but also it has an inverse. So when we multiply it by the inverse, we get the identity matrix. By the identity matrix, what we mean is we can multiply any 3 by 3 matrix by this, and we'll just get the same matrix again, and we'll show that in the next video. 
What we're trying to show here is that for a non-singular matrix is that when you take it to its reduced, um, reduced echelon form, it's going to look like this, and these we can convert into ones just by dividing through whatever numbers these are. So you're going to end up with the identity matrix. So any non-singular matrix is row equivalent to the identity matrix. And that's a fact that we're going to make uh, much use of later on in the future videos. So come back, join us for those videos, and we'll continue to uh, uh, explore the properties of matrices. What we're going to do in the next video is see exactly how we multiply matrices. So come join us for that, and we'll try and solve some more problems.